good evening good afternoon good morning depending on where you are we're here tonight to um add value to you this is the 18th session on leadership talk with adegoke and tonight i have the privilege of joining me a fellow john maxwell team speaker and also coach i have with me sana tivola all right so you're welcome <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you thank you Adegoge. all right yes excited okay. to be here. yeah you were saying are you happy to be here or glad to be here i'm excited to be here i'm very happy to be here so thank you thank you thank you <laughs> all right excellent oh. excellent yes excellent you're welcome uh all the way from finland you're showing up yes. <laughs> yeah yes yes yeah, showing up big time you know yes i'm so, so i'm so happy honored. yes yeah so very honored is it cold in finland or freezing uh let me say it's it's only cold and if, if not even that we are actually just uh, above zero at the moment like plus two or three Celsius, so all the snow is about to melt away, at least from here in southern Finland. Up in Lapland, wow. it's all very wintry, and we've had lots of snow down here as well, loads of it, like half a meter down in south. So wow. it's it's really been a true wonderful winter time. Yeah. Wow, wow. amazing. Um, we have with us uh, a friend of mine that usually you know, he's my accountability partner. His, his name is Odeyemi Olaiwale. He's on uh -huh. this call, he's on this session, and uh, he's saying hello to you. Oh, <laughs> hello. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. It's so, yeah. so good. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, wow. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, very gladly. So, um, let me first say, though, how grateful I am for this opportunity, Adegoge. I admire you immensely and appreciate really this opportunity for me to share this leadership talk with you and uh, admire all what you do and for especially for who you are. So you're my fellow John Maxwell team member and a great leader. So thank you. Thank you. I am Sanna Sihvola, mother of four, living in Finland at the moment, currently in south of Finland, capital area, next to Helsinki in a small town called Vanta. And uh, I'm an early childhood and special education teacher for children hard of hearing, deaf, and uh, with communication challenges. Wow. I'm also an author of a book called The Amazing Woman and uh, that's about uh, how to create a meaningful happy life with the balance method. Wow. And uh, I'm enthusiastic educator working currently with toddlers meaning children age one till three. So basically children under four years and uh, I work in an uh, international daycare center here in southern Finland, Vanta, and uh, loving my work. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So you are also an author? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. So um, when did you write your first book? I wrote my first book 2000. 14 2014 wow. yes yes wow. and uh, mm -hmm. yes Amazing. So <laughs> Thank is, that, is, that, is that your last book or, or you still have several to write i've got several to write but that is my last la only and last so far so wow. far until, until the next one yes wow, wow. 
Amazing. Now, um, Sana, how did you get into leadership? Uh, I feel that it's kind of my calling, I think, because yeah. uh, my parents were my examples. I grew up on a little farm, so my father was a farmer and uh, my mother was a uh, many talents woman with many talents. So I grew up working hard already and uh, my father was in the war as well. And uh, I happened to have good teachers who set me a good example. I was very early working on a youth camp as a supervisor or swimming instructor. And uh, after I took my uh, matriculation exams, I moved to UK yeah. uh, in Kent, Folkestone. And I started to become a playgroup teacher there. And uh, from, from England, I applied to the university in Finland and I took my degree in um, uh, early childhood education. So to say, it, um, earlier we called kindergarten teachers. It's the same thing, but these days we call it early childhood education teacher. And wow. uh, so, yes. That's that's basically basically when I was twenty, just under twenty years, twenty two or so. Wow. Wow. Um, then then what happened? My father died, and uh, I was asked to take uh, to run the farm. So I did that for two years, and uh, took care of my mother. But then I moved to town to continue my work as a kindergarten teacher. Amazing. And later on, I, I qualified in special education and uh, uh, like I like told you, um, a teacher for deaf, hard of hearing and wow. communication challenges. Yes. Wow. And uh, so I worked many years at school with uh, preschoolers and uh, and children of all ages, really. Wow. Uh, and then a friend of mine, Maria Lena Joukainen, uh, yeah. uh, she invited me to uh, take part on a leadership course. Okay. And that was, that was 2013. A leadership course. I was well, mm. and it was called Dare to Lead, mm. and it was about. It, it was really an interesting approach. Mm. So there were, there were actually a group of dancers, enthusiastic dancers, like I was at that time. I did some ballroom dancing. And uh, we really hard studied during the day and really hard uh, danced in the evenings. That's nice, yeah. But, yeah, but it was an excellent combination. We went around the Canary Islands and it was really fascinating. We did, wow. for instance, this uh, disc. We 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 did this disc tests. Yeah. And yeah. It was very it was very good. So after that, I took uh, a year, a half a year off of school, mm. thinking yeah. that I just need some some me time or just time off of work. And uh, yeah. I literally found myself writing this book creating wow. this, this this method because I said I I want to figure this out as a woman as a teacher as a mm. mother yeah there, there are so many so many things that what does my life consist of so mm. during that book course there was a teacher Pekka Mattila who and he Mr. Pekka Mattila he introduced me to John Maxwell's Wow. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Can you believe this? So I really got interested. And mm. what happened? 2016, I got certified as a John Maxwell team speaker, coach, and mentor. Yeah, we were we were we met. We were certified together in Orlando, yeah. 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 Amazing, and now we are here. So, yeah, yeah. what, what? That's that's basically 
that's basically it. Wow, wow, amazing. Sana, you, you're such a powerful lady. I mean, showing up, and I just want to salute you. Um, you're just adding value even at this time. And John, our mentor, is telling us we should change the world, you know, and this is one of the things uh, that uh, should be found in leaders, you know, um, showing up, showing up. And we're, we're, we're seizing the moment, we're capturing the moment, we're just showing up, you know, irrespective of what is happening um, all over the world right now. People, they need a lot of encouragement and um, I'm happy to have you on this platform. Um, so um, what's the difference between uh, leadership and early childhood education? Um, the relationship is very close. It's much, much closer than you might think. It's very sensitive, warm and firm, loving relationship. It's, and it's, the relationship is right there from the very beginning. And it's very needed in creating a good life. For yeah. example, for example, when, when, the baby, when a baby is born, first thing one does is crying out loud so much and so long that that one gets fed one gets one gets uh, food one gets dry diapers one gets warmth and so so it's like from the moment the child is is uh, birth has been birth it starts trying to manage him or herself his well-being her well-being mm. shouting out loud because that's mm. that that's what but the, but that's that's in us that's within mm. us yeah. so leadership is already within each of us mm. right from the start it just shows different forms which we have to be very sensitive of especially mm. when we're talking about child when we're talking about children under four years okay to be sensitive yes wow 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 awesome awesome so how can a child become a leader um one we have to give the child responsibility okay so we, we were not to do things for them all the time we daily meet parents who want to dress them up who want to feed them who want to put things literally in front of them so much that they they kind of lack the freedom to choose or they lack they they can't practice their skills mm. whereas we guide them that uh, uh, little by little self-management skills let him eat by himself we give the spoon right when they come, we give the spoon right in the hand and we encourage the child to start to start uh, eating by himself. And then we, we, we feed him while he's eating himself, while she's eating himself. Then we let the child try to dress himself up, let mm. try to wash his hands, tidy up, create mm. the play. What would you like to play? So mm. that with giving freedom... Mm. You give the chance to uh, grow child's responsibility. Mm. For instance, uh, responsibility of when when there's a playing time, you can choose. Uh, you you may choose a playing space. Let's say it's in the sleeping room. It might be in the hall, or it's in the group activity room. So, which place do you choose? You choose one place, then the child gets their, gets their his uh, his toys or whatever material he wants to use with with his friends. So that's his choice, and the the follow up is that they cut they cannot change their uh, place of playing every five minutes. That's not possible. Now you want to choose that. We appreciate others. We respect others. So you stay in that place, and you can get <laughs> more toys there. You 
go collect, you take your basket and you collect whatever things you need to create your play. So, Sana, yeah. I, I just want to, sorry to interrupt you. You know, I, what, do you require patience? Uh, patience to uh, train a child to become a leader? Or is it just taken for granted that, you know, children just grow up and become leaders? Oh no, you 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 need patience. Wow. You, yeah, you mean as an educator, you need patience. You need pa patience, and you need focus to to uh, what whatever like feelings change or emotion emotions change, but you need to keep your focus and and have the goals set in the future. And that's what we do. We set the goals. We talk with parents and we set the goals. What is this child supposed to learn during this half a year, during this term? Or And, and, and uh, as soon as we, we notice that now this is what she has learned, then we uh, document it and then we set another goal, another goal. And it's wow. continuous encouragement encouragement and giving the child a good example and uh, there can be you only need one person it can be a parent it can be your neighbor your teacher your nursery nurse your your relative somebody who believes in that child one person is, is enough and now s some of you may think that well some people are just lucky they have all good people around no you can choose when you grow you choose you remember oh because of my parent was like that i don't want to be like that i'm going to be different or no son sorry yes i'm going to interrupt you again now <laughs> you see particularly for for um uh, parents that are, are working mothers how easy is it for them to to raise child that are leaders you know because by the time they come back from work they're tired you know i mean do you just as teachers just train the children or you need the involvement of parents oh yes we we cooperate very closely with parents they are the first and foremost um guide for a child we support them and that's why it's so very important that how does an educator cooperate with parent? How does one meet parent? Mm. And, uh, because the parent gets a pretty good idea how you treat her child the way you treat her. A mother or father gets a pretty good idea how does this educator treat his or her child the way that the educator treats me as a parent so we work very closely and we always make sure that we say some something supportive something encouraging to the parent we every day we we don't just say that oh he's eaten well he slept well so we we have a, a small notebook where we write something that for instance today he he liked playing with with cars with this with this friend or today he succeeded in or today he, it was he was really happy when he was doing this jumping in the sport Paul, so so that um, first we want to see how really talented each child has talents. Each wow. child is lovable. Wow. Each child, they, they just are. You just have to find it, and and when you want to see it, it's easier to see. There's no such child who's who is who isn't any good. There's always good, and wow. you. You you get uh, you get close to the family and you get close to the child once you care, then you connect, and then thirdly you can communicate. Wow. It's like it's like your uh, a phone. Where's my phone here? So you need you need to take care of your 
phone so that it's not broken then you can connect it and then you can communicate with it okay That's, yeah it's the same thing with a young child or any child you show that you care mm. with with uh, giving good food being present being delighted when they come in the morning you said oh so lovely to see you i've been waiting for you i've been wondering where you have been so uh, and and so you deal you get delighted you're so happy to see the child and also when you when when they leave you say all right bye bye see you tomorrow make sure see you tomorrow looking forward to seeing you tomorrow have a good evening and so that and so you show that you care you take care of warmth feeding good play nice safe environment activities all that wow. And, wow. and then you then you can start building the communication if wow. you don't if you don't care they don't want to connect with you they don't want to certainly communicate with you anymore so three wow. c yes wow 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 sana you what sana you've been you've been an edu educator for 30 years 30 years what has yes. kept you this far to be honest 36 years 36 wow 36 years because it, it was 85 1985 when i when i uh, became early childhood education teacher wow <laughs> Where does the time go? I don't know. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, so, <laughs> wow. Thank you. So I've seen some. I've seen some. I've, I've, I have the experience on, on wow. some, some sort of experience, yes. Wow. And you have four children as well, four children of your own. Yes, yes. Wow. Eight, eight, I have three sons and a daughter. So they are age... 22 till 27 in between wow. 22 and 27 yes wow wow, wow. And they, they have taught me so much. much so much wow so how easy was it for you to raise your children and other people's children how, how easy was it for you to do that while raising your children four children and all the, also being an early childhood educator yeah how, how easy was it was it for you well it was it was tough but what was what was good is that uh, i was uh, taking care of them for many years at home when they were young i stayed at home because there was first there was one then there was very soon another one i was about to go to work and then there was third one and then there was fourth one so we thought it's better for me to stay at home and and take care of them and then they grew up and then after several years i got back to work but when i did get back to work i i i must admit it it was tough because wow. the days were, they the days were so full the days were absolutely so full so we we got at that time we got some help because there okay. were some, some uh, organizations which uh, which have uh, like uh, uh, what do you call well some babysitters some babysitters so just to have uh, an hour or two hours to, uh, like self time for okay. me to recover. yeah I needed that however I must say that uh, my um, like the attitude changed. I grew up, I'm 100% sure that I grew up as an educator along with my children. Okay. And the perspective, the perspective changed. And uh, I'm so grateful for the fact that I was able to stay at home and, uh, and then uh, learn from my children. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, but I, I hear the young, I hear the mothers who have children and who go to work and then they pick up the children and then they have all this homework. Mm -hmm. It is tough and it is 
certainly a leadership that mother and father shows a great leadership to do that all to go to work to take care of the family to be a spouse to each other i mean it's dream is dream yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so so you need it's absolute must that you learn how to find your balance and the balance does not mean perfection by any means it means your balance what what is it that you need in your life to relax to recover to re recharge to mm. be able to, because you cannot give what you what do you not have, have. Mm. Yeah. that's that's impossible mm. you cannot mm. well i must salute you you know uh sign up for you know i've been very frank you know because um uh, often time when you see um people that have been through what you've been through some don't like sharing because it's a reminder of what you know uh what life is you know our life has dealt with that it's not it's not uh an easy route you know now you have children spaced the, the space between your children was not much how were you able to juggle you know relating with the, despite the fact that you had to stay at home how were you able to cope with that uh, like how do you mean now you had four children yes you know you know the ages were maybe like two one you know years in be in between four children yes how were you able to cope despite the fact that you were at home you know for a few years did you have a nanny or you know do you had a professional you know well i had like like said um I had occasional, let's say, within a week, with let's say one week, I could have like a babysitter, like for a couple of hours, like once or twice a week, so that <clears throat> I would have like recovering time. Because, okay. because, because uh, when there was the first one, then there's one month, one year and uh, five months, then there was second one. And there was two years, two months, then there was third one. And wow. by the time the oldest was five years old, there were already four of them. <laughs> wow. I don't know how, but there were there were four of them. The oldest oldest was five, and I had a baby in, in my arms, and there were four of them. So wow. now now looking looking back though. I, I can honestly say I, I really liked it. It was tough, but I liked it. I was so tired, though. I I I can admit, I can admit that I was tired. At the same time, I was sometimes thinking, is it in this happiness that I'm dying? <laughs> because I was so, I was honestly so tired. But then again, uh, they slept well, they ate well. Because I, I was at that time, I was a kindergarten teacher, so I, I had a pretty good idea how it it is supposed to go. It's it was very the days were very uh, like logical. It was very yeah. the, the, the rhythm was there, and uh, uh, for, fortunately, they were they were um, not that much ill or yeah. anything like that. And like I said. So I had this, I took help, like this babysitter was okay. a couple of times. Yeah. So you can accept help, accept help and, so, and call for help. Now, so you're saying to those who might be listening, who have, uh, you know, many children that they need help. You can't do it alone. You need, you need, you need support. Yeah, I, 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 I strongly encourage you to, to accept help uh, or mm. look for help look for help because there there are good babysitters and, and that does not cost much sometimes you you don't have neighbors or relatives or anyone like in our case uh we had grandparents but they were like 500 kilometers away so wow. <clears throat> and uh, it was not just that it was not possible and mine were they have been passed away already a long time ago so um we were in the we had to we had to because uh, otherwise you you'd get so drained out 
that you only get easily upset and it's not good for the children why why do you get so many children if you cannot if you don't want to take care of them well well but you know in africa we, we you know some have seven children six children you know and, yes uh, you know but what happens in the african culture is that you know you have brothers and yes, nieces yes. Uh, that stay yes, with yes. in-laws so but it's not in all cases um now, what, what's the cost of raising a child? You know, the impact of that on a marriage, raising many children. How do you mean? On the finance, finance, financial side, on oh, raising okay. many. Yeah. Ah, um, well, there's a saying actually that uh, the child brings the bread. I don't know if it's only in Finland, but it's a saying that the, the child brings the bread um money wise uh you get you get payment from from the council for okay. uh, support payments for each each child and uh, uh our he social security is good our health care is good so i would not say that it's 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 difficult it's, it's not that difficult here in Finland and uh, you saying about African families have many children in my group there are out of these eight children like I mentioned they speak at home Swahili, Kinja, Rwanda, Thai, Albania and Finnish sign language and Somali so wow. I have in, in, in our, our group, there are seven children out of eight that mother language is something else than Finnish. And they have big families too. Wow. And they have wow. big families. And then when they are expecting another one, they say that you get that soon. <laughs> to get so, we, so we, bring saying, we bring it here for you to take care. <laughs> so they bring all the children to the daycare. Now they're from you know different countries apart from not a lot of uh, Finnish you know people from Finland, but because of your immigration policy, you have people from all over the world. But yes. their culture is different from that of uh, now for the for the average uh, uh, Finnish family. I mean, how many children do they have? I'd say two, two or three. Okay. Two or three. If you have three, that's considered already quite a lot. Four is a lot. <laughs> so you <need> four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a big. We have a big family. Wow. wow. Four is a lot. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Uh, if you're just joining us, I'm speaking with my friend. And my coach, John Maxwell, uh, a speaker, trainer, and coach, uh, Sana Sihola, Sivola, from uh, Finland. And uh, she's speaking on ch the leadership and early childhood education. I trust that you are, you are, you're having a wonderful time. If you have questions or comments, please drop them in the, in the comment section. Now, the next question I want to ask you is that, how can you incorporate uh, uh, child leadership in in the curriculum how you know at what stage do you incorporate child leadership in your curriculum we we started immediately so uh, we have national education plan and uh, if I may I read just a short short uh, the framework for pedagogical activity, a holistic approach describes the pedagogy activities of early childhood education and care and their implementation. The aim is to promote children learning and well-being as well as their transfer of competence. Pedagogical activities carried out in interaction and shared activities between children and personnel. Okay. Children, free activities as well as those that the children and personnel come up with together or that are planned and led by the personal supplement each other. 
pedagogy yeah. emphasized in all activity. So we have this national education plan. We started immediately. There are five different transversal competencies. That's that's first thing, which are like basic core skills, which we are teaching through and with five different uh, learning areas. Okay. And, uh, then third, very important, is that we take no, very close notice of children's own interests and needs and environment in which children grew up. So it, it starts, and, and hear me when I say of this, what are these transversal competencies? Because it gives you an idea that it can be started immediately. It's taking care and managing daily life. What I was telling you about, they start eating themselves. They start, we let them dress up and we guide them in, in tidying up and all that. Then we teach them to think and learn. First we do this, then we go outdoors. First we dress up, then we go outdoors. What's the weather like? What do we need to put put on or wear? Thinking and learning. And participation and involvement. Hmm. Learning to take responsibility by taking part. Hmm. Like what I told you about, for instance, the playing areas or the toys they choose. They cannot change it every two minutes. Now I want this, no, I want that. Now, you chose that, you wanted that, you thought about what you want, you can choose. Of course, yeah. it, a three-year-old can very well do that already, two-year-old even. And then we have cultural competence, interaction and self-expression. And then we have multiliteracy and competence in information and communication technology. Wow. So, yeah, we're yeah. using technology already. We're using different... They can even... Two-year-old, a two-year-old can walk around with, with an iPad and they can yeah. take pictures of each other. They can film each other. And then yeah. we can then we can talk about it later on. Look who's here. Well, where did you <laughs> what, what, what what was you taking? Yeah, that is it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what they what they actually can already do. So yeah. much. Wow. So much. Yeah. Yes. So that's that's wow, wow, that's, that's that's my answer. Wow, that's that's really fascinating, you know, because at that level, a two-year-old using the iPad to take pictures, yes, and it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we caught it was this Friday or or Thursday, was it? We were, uh, they were just two-year-old toddlers, two girls. They were. Uh, Sitting, it was after they had um, woke up from the de from from their sleep during the daytime. It was afternoon time, and uh, in the sleeping room, we use iPad. We play some very tranquil music, and uh, it was still there. The iPad. Now, the next thing we know, we were looking. These two girls were sitting on the floor in the in the hall, and uh, they had this iPad. And they were browsing through. <laughs> they were browsing through these these um, pictures of different different uh, programs. And they were said, "Oh, programs, programs." They were saying. We were <laughs> we looked at each other, and uh, I asked the other nurse, "That did you give them this? Uh, do they have a permission to do that?" She, I don't know. Then let's, let's ask the other teacher. Did you give the permission? No. So the, the girls had taken it by themselves. They managed to to uh, come out from the program which was on the music, and they were in the in the area where they can choose different. Wow. Two year olds, and we didn't even know they were fooling us. We didn't even know whether they had a permission. They were look, do, look, doing it like. <laughs> <laughs> you go. There you go. So you, what you're saying, if I can, uh, you know, reinforce what you said, is that you know you teach children how to be leaders from the get go. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, what, what, does, that, what does that do? What does that? What do? You, what do you think that does? You know, in in the 
in, in, in the process of becoming adults? Oh, it, it's, 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 it's big. It's big. It um, helps them to develop positive self-image because wow. they realize that they are capable of learning so much and doing so much. It's positive self-image and uh, the, the sense of, I am good, I can learn anything, I'm, I'm good, I can cooperate with this girl, we, we find the best programs here. <laughs> we are about to play the best programs <laughs> in this iPad, for instance. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's built so much like confidence in them and uh, let alone different abilities. So they have different, very many choices wow. as long as they, they grow up. They are not afraid. They are curious because they have been given the possibility to try. So they are curious. What else can I do? What what other programs are here? What what shall we play? And then they communicate together like these two girls. They were communicating their all programs, <laughs> even though they they speak a little. They speak a little, but not, not the that. Agent. At the age of two, they speak, they communicate as well. A little bit, yes. <laughs> so what you're saying is that your your curriculum is structured in such a way to raise leaders, your your early childhood education curriculum. Yes, we have we have the pieces there, and uh, and we have the uh, areas, the transversal competencies, and. Uh, we have much freedom to implement how, how we are going to act upon it as long as we include these major things, transversal competencies, learning areas and children's own interests and needs and its um, environment where the child grew up. These wow. three are very essential. Um, however, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of freedom. So, um, and now this is interesting. You asking me this because uh, once I changed, um, once I changed from uh, working at school, it was first 2014 till 16. I was working two years in an English speaking kindergarten here. Then I moved back to to a small town. Then I again two years ago I moved back here when my children moved away from home. So uh, what I noticed coming from school is that at school we the curriculum is fairly strict at strict and set. You have, for instance, you have languages five hours per week. You have mathematics four hours or whatever. You have sports, two hours. You have art, music, certain amount of hours. So that guarantees that as a teacher, I give, I equip the child, the student, what he's supposed to get, to have, to learn. However, in daycare, it's not so, so organized. So, that's that's what I, I I'd say that it's uh, it can be a problem that how can a teacher how can a early childhood educator guarantee that as a teacher I provide equip and teach the child all that I'm supposed to teach all that is my responsibility and everything that the child is entitled to hmm. so I've created a strategy. Wow. And, uh, framework. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that will be that will be translated into English and I shall do that. I shall be doing that online, I'm sure. Because uh, it guarantees that the children get what they are entitled to according to the plan equally all year round. Wow. Wow. And it takes it takes because uh, when it's like now, it's Sunday evening, I'm supposed to know 
what I'm doing next week, how I start tomorrow, what's on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what's next week. And uh, it can be quite stressful. Mm. It can be, it uh, for a teacher, it can be like, uh, let's say there are many, there are many good good uh, ways to do this. I'm not saying that. It's just me personally. I need more structure, and I guarantee that there are many teachers who stress about the fact that do I really cater all of it, all these five transversal competencies, mm. and all mm. all this. So this is a solution for that so that mm. spend your su Sunday evening, Sunday, the whole Sunday, whole weekend, relaxing, relax mm. Richard, because you know what's coming. You've got mm. this strategy. You know mm. what's coming. So I've done a Finnish early childhood education plan, pedagogy in a nutshell. Mm. Yeah, mm. but that's, that's enough. Wow. Uh, Wow, and, and you, you, you are almost a professor of early childhood education, you know? <laughs> you. Honestly, I, I didn't know that it was so detailed, you know? I mean, I just thought, you know, um, you just walk with children and just jump and laugh and just roll on the floor, play toys. <laughs> I didn't know that you had a lot of structure, you know? Oh, yes, Particularly, we particularly uh, training children up to be leaders. I mean, mm -hmm. I went to, um, you know, uh, nursery school. It was it was called reception. Uh, but we played with a lot of toys. I mean, what is the role of toys, you know, in, um, in, in raising children as leaders? Like, like how? Toys, you know, um, yeah. you know, computers, all this, you know, you know, what, what's, what, 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 of what advantage is it, you know? You know that some children, it's not all the children, you know, that um, there's some schools, they don't have a lot of toys. I mean, do you have a lot of uh, equipment for yes. helping children to reason well, yeah? Yes, we have, we have. Our our, our uh, daycare center, we are, we are fortunate. And uh, all over in Finland, I would say that this, the situation is good and okay. uh, because uh, this early childhood education plan, uh, the, the start is that you need to have the equipment to be able to carry it out. So we do have, yes, um, um, computers, we have iPads, we have certain, certain kind of uh, um, light tables, yeah. equipment. We have different sorts very different source and and different source and uh, it, it's good also also toys as such and uh, it's very nice it's it's uh, built two years ago it's, wow. I actually have it on my Facebook page it's it's there behind my personal picture it's okay. big wide we call it a, a fairy castle wow. because it's it's beautiful. It's big and beautiful, and we have glass doors there. They can see, and especially good for hard of hearing or deaf children too, because mm. they can see. They need to visualize. They don't hear, but they see, and uh, that's so good. And uh, it's 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 very nice. But wow. yes, yeah. now now when it comes to Sana, I mean, I want to appreciate you. Now, when it comes to uh, deaf children. And, and dumb children. And what's, what's the biggest challenge for you? What has been the biggest challenge for you? I know you said a lot of nice things. What has been the biggest challenge for you uh, raising up deaf and dumb children to be leaders? Hmm. I think it's continuously take into notice into consideration because there are in the in the group there can be a deaf a hard of hearing and a hearing child so together together yes i even had one blind child and one 
who did not want to speak or or speak out she was she was good otherwise but she didn't want to speak out anyway so to for instance we did alphabet so that there was sign language alphabet uh in pictures then there was for the blind there was that he could feel them and then ordinary alphabets for the others mm. and so it really is the case that all the time to take into consideration that they uh, they focus on different ways that they need some someone needs to hear me talking mm. but the deaf child he he needs me to sign all the time sign yeah language. all yeah. the time so i said sign language is my superpower mm. wow. <laughs> yeah yeah and then hard of hearing he needs me to sign according to how i speak at the same time whereas actually sign language is something that hmm. okay. I, i'm not because the word order is different so that challenge is there that the how do you say the diversity of the students the difference yeah. The difference is that to make sure that I, I <clears throat> understand or or get each each one individually, You're and right. deaf, uh, yeah, yeah, and also deaf deaf children is is uh, is very interesting. It, it's a it's kind of an another world. Hmm. Wow. It's very interesting, and wow. I feel, I feel kind of honored because some parents are deaf too wow. so i'm very honored at as a hearing uh, a teacher who hears they sort of take me seriously mm. because i'm i the, it's not my mother tongue it's their mother tongue mm. but they 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 are i'm i'm so honored when they are kind that they as we as as you pronounce well so i understand you Yeah. So the the deaf parent signs very nicely so that I understand her, and then then. <laughs> wow! Wow! You know, I I I just want to celebrate you and salute you. You know, um, for showing up, because the things that you're sharing, even for those that are going to be watching replay, I've been speaking with Sana Sipola Sipola, uh, from Finland. Uh, she's my fellow John Maxwell uh, coach, speaker, and trainer. She's been an early educator, childhood educator for 36 years. And she's talking about, you know, leadership and early childhood education. And one of the things that she shared with us is that, you know, if you want to uh, raise up a child to become a leader, you do it from the beginning. And there's certain things that you need to begin to uh, practice. Uh, children, you know, when they pick up toys, you let them know that they have to use the toys for a minimum of five minutes. Am I correct? <laughs> yes, <but> very minimum. <laughs> so how do you enforce that? You know, what if the child is saying, no, I, w I want another toy almost immediately. What do you do? I say, no, that's not possible. Remember, you chose that. You you wanted that. And then we can use, for instance, in in the, um, again, in, uh, in my phone, for instance, in your phone too, in anyone's yeah. phone, there's a, uh, uh you can use a timer you use okay. the timer and the child sees there's a circle the child sees when the certain amount of minutes comes full and i said wow. listen look at this when when the this uh <clears throat> circle is full then you can go then you can wow. change it's wow. changing yeah wow. and uh, wow. also now that you ask how do we communicate and I tell you, I'll sh show you. So I'm using these sort of things. This is this is the best. <laughs> I tell you, this is the best because this is so clear. This is green as good. That's well done, good. And it's it's encouragement and uh, good job. You did a good job. You're excellent. That's that's my girl. That's my boy. But then, if if somebody if somebody is 
is hitting someone or is 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 breaking something or something or 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 shouting or something. I said, now listen, you know better. Show you the can, red. Yeah, <laughs> I put, I show the red, and this is so powerful. I I started reusing these after, and even some <clears throat> one one boy was very restless or very short. He concentrated very, very short time, very short time. But each time he concentrated or he did something that I asked. And then I said, oh, good job. You did so good. He wanted to come and he wanted to mm, touch this. It became so dear to him. And with these two, this, this is brilliant. Whoever yeah. has invented this. And I don't use yellow at all because that's at least in this stage in this uh when they are so young it's confusing okay it's confusing sort of traffic lights it's is is yes or no no and okay. and and then we have these or i use these i'll show you so it's a smiley face okay yeah you're so good i'm so happy to see you again today Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then here is a sign language uh, picture. And here are all good. And then there's a wait. Wait. Wow. Uh, this, is, yeah. this is amazing. You know, yeah. I mean, Sarah, this is, I mean, I'm, I'm, you've blown us away with all these tools. I mean, I salute you. This is, you know, you're not just, you're just a leader. You're, you're living the life of a leader. I mean, Thank this tool you. that you're using, I've never seen it before. I'm not into early childhood education. <laughs> yeah, but this I mean, is, is it's ever so simple. And then we have here the basic things. Now you're about to go to the toilet. Yes. And then you can come and eat. And then you can you can tell a short story. After that, you wash up your hands and that. Wow. And it's it's the sign is here so that he learns he learns the signs and uh, and the most favorable the most favorable is they said show me smiley face and then i show here you go you did a good job and then somebody else show me too all right i show you you did a good job too i'll show each one of you so i i encourage them immensely i i like pour the love i pour the love so that the love and the good, it, it's it's flooding, it's flooding, and what what happens is that the flood goes down, and then the valleys, which are negative or not so good, they raise too. Wow. So so the no, not so good qualities raise too because it's pouring, 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 and there's there's so many things that I can thank them and be happy Ooh. for them and wow. yeah yeah this so wow <laughs> you know obviously you love what you do i mean you you for you to have stayed this long in this uh field for 36 years i mean yeah. uh you must really love it you know you must really love it i mean uh now yeah you want to say something go ahead go ahead yeah i wanted to say something that uh that uh, um, my motto is, and where it came from, because now you mentioned this, yes, it's 36 years ago, and even more, because when I started, it was 83. The very first autumn when uh, the university study started, it was, there was a strike. As a first year student, we needed to take part in the strike, and it was, for the university education. They were threatening us to take it away from the university and only to uh, educate kindergarten teachers in colleges. So we were against that. And uh, we, we needed to think, what do, we want to, what do we want to say? So I came up with an idea. This is 83 autumn. I came up as the first year student, the fir very first autumn. I came up with this with this thought. I painted it out on a blanket. 
protect the child, educate the adult. Wow. And here, it's, it, I don't know, but then I, at some point later on, I remembered, and now what I'm doing, I'm protecting the child as I'm educating the adult because I have the opportunity to mentor the students of Helsinki University. Wow, wow, wow. So, Are you still do, you're still doing that? Yeah, I'm doing that because now that I moved here and started in this new daycare center, our it's it's one of the part of the job that uh, if you want, you can do a mentoring to the university students. And uh, I really like it because, uh, first of all, I learn so much from them. Second, they prove, am I right or wrong? Is this useful? For instance, this strategy, this pedagogy in a nutshell, is it useful or not? They are they're testing it and they've proved it it's working so wow. yeah and uh, i i can watch them closely and uh, i have 36 years experience so i've wow. got something to share wow. i've got something to share and my uh, wife is, my wife is also on the platform she's saying protect the child and educate the adults she's clapping for you oh thank you i noticed it now yes yeah that, that's that's what's happening that's what I, I painted it on a cardboard and I was <laughs> protecting and that was, the, yeah. And that was in nineteen eighty three. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. wow. Yeah, I, years ago. yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know. And uh, and I've done some some uh, programs to help to create habits, not not just programs as such because once you have a program you you take a program you do it one two three weeks and then you re, you forget it but i have developed some programs well, and uh, for instance our fellow john maxwell team member muki olori yeah i would gonna, yeah. Yeah. ask me to teach uh, in a girls in, in a global girls camp last May, uh, how to develop a positive self image. So that's what I thought, taught to the girls nine till six, no, twelve years old, and then I taught um, how to create a meaningful happy life with balance method. The girls yeah. age um, nine till. No, 12 till 18 or so, something like that. Wow. Yes. Wow. So, and uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just grateful for, for being able to do this, this work and grateful for um, my manager, Rita Salonen, who supports me and who encourages me that let's try this in our daycare center let's do this and then then the colleagues come along and then i i cannot complain wow cannot amazing complain. amazing sana i just we want to celebrate you those who are on the platform you can see a lot of comments are coming in you know i mean so many comments here um quality teaching methods you know they're really saying this is insightful um Joseph is saying he's insightful. Uh, Kemi from Atlanta in America. She's saying oh. educational toys, teaches children about sharing, helps children develop their fine and gross motor skills and nurtures yeah. creativity. You know, someone else, the same Kemi is also saying there's more to teaching. That is why you have to love what you do. And Sana, you love what you do, you know? I mean, uh, there's so many people here and my John Maxwell brother from uh, Odemi Olai, he said, thinking and learning, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You are not just teaching, but you're also thinking, you know. Uh, you also talked about the three C's, a wonderful uh, strategy. Now, can you, the three C's, what is the yeah. three C's? Yeah. The three C's is 
that uh, you care, first of all, you care about the child. Once you show how you care, he allows, she allows you to connect with her or him. Yeah. And then once, once you care, you can connect, then you can communicate with the wow. child. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. You cannot, you cannot, you have to be very sensitive. You have to be very sensitive because they, they can be shy. They're, they're so young that they don't want to. They want to be with their mummy or daddy. They don't want mm. to come with strangers. So you have to find your way to earn their trust. Wow. They're very particular clients. Mm. They're very particular, special clients. Wow. Wow. The whole wow. family, wow. let alone the children. Wow. They're very, they're very, very, even though they wouldn't say a word, but they're very, their perceptions are open, they're very delicate and very sensitive. So wow. I, I need to respect that. I want to respect that. So I gently care. I make sure that he's warm. She's, she's uh, cu um, warm and fed. And if, if she's sleeping, if she fall about when, they, when we are having lunch, they tend to fall asleep because they're so small, some of them. So I need to be awake and see, okay, she needs to be taken now. Let's take her to sleeping room a little bit early. Because once, if I don't take, she will cry and that will pass. The moment will pass and then it's much more difficult. difficult yeah. yeah, so you care, connect, and then you communicate. Wow, 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 wow. Care, connect, and communicate. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You, <sighs> you remember it thinking about your phone. Yeah. You, 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 you take care of your phone so much. Yeah. It's it's working. Then you yeah. can then you can connect it with this. Okay. With this okay. uh, what this you can connect it, and then wow. once it's it, it's taken care, it's connected, then you can communicate. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Can communicate. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, wow. and now I must, I want to add, add this that um, when we're laughing here, we're having good time. I knew we would. I, <laughs> I knew we would. And this is also, it's, it is, is very important to have fun, to love yeah. your work and to have fun because if, if you start saying like uh, all these 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 children they're not laughing or they don't they don't have fun how much fun are you exactly to be around with so hmm. it's 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 they are our mirrors see they are our mirrors that's wow. a mirror. You, mirror. Sana, you have you have a lot of tools in your in your office there is this your office or your home <laughs> both <laughs> no you're amazing you know if you want to follow sana what what are your uh platforms you know i uh, share your social media platform so that they can follow you thank you thank you Adegoge. my social yeah. media platforms are uh first of all instagram sana sihvola official sana sihvola official that's my main can, can you spell the uh sihvola Sivola is S S I H V O L A. Official. Uh, official. Yes, Sanna Sivola official. That's Instagram. Yes, that's the Instagram. Um, yeah. Then I have. Is this uh, correct? Yes. Perfect. Instagram. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Then, uh, then what's the other Facebook. one? Yeah, Facebook is other one. I'm not that much there at the moment, but it's it's there. So that's that's in with my name, just uh, Sanna Sihvola, as such. You find me there. Sanna C C C S I H. Yes, V O L A. Sihvola. 
That's Facebook, yeah? Yes, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Also, you find my name, Sanna Sihvola, in LinkedIn. And uh, Twitter also. I'm, I'm there in my... Don't worry. Don't worry. I know you're all over the place. They'll find you. <laughs> Let me just put... <laughs> Well, you're an amazing lady, you know. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate yeah, I mean, you. This is great. This is yeah. so much fun. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the character, character is so such a big thing. Character. A leader has to develop and have character. You can learn skills. You can study skills. You have so many programs, books to learn from that it, there are just so many no yes. i mean yeah you see why, why i'm so i'm so encouraged you know um we met four years ago in orlando florida yeah 2016 we were on the same john maxwell course you know uh program and i yes. never knew I, I never knew we were going to be on the same platform today sharing to you know all over the world you know uh, you are in Finland, I'm in Lagos, Nigeria, Africa, you know, and the connection is like, you know, this. Um, I just want to say that I'm so proud of you uh, for what you do and what you're doing, you know, regarding the children, uh, because that's also what my wife does. And incidentally, you know, she's also been in the field for, for quite some time. I mean, people never appreciate what uh, early educators do because you have children, but you also have to raise other people's children. And uh, it's a lot of work. And uh, you're not just showing up, but the skills that you have shared today are priceless skills. It's not just, just about, oh, playing with the children, jump up, you know, roll on the floor. But you're using a lot of tools. I mean, smiley faces, you know, uh, your phone, iPad, laptop, all manners of things. And also watching the children you talked about caring, connecting, and communication, the three Cs. And also, what you're also sharing tonight is similar to what John is also telling us uh, about everyone communicates, few connect. That communication is very important as a leader. And also about empathy, the empathetic leader. You know, you have to care. If you don't care, people know you don't care, then yeah. they won't listen to you. You know, right. people don't care how much you know until they know how much you what, how much you care. That's you know? right. And that's, that's very right. important. So I begin to round up. I just want you to share, you know, because we've gone past an hour, you know, it's just as if we've done only 20 minutes. Now, in three minutes, what would you like to tell those who are listening, those who watch the replay, you know, about leadership and early childhood education? You lead by example. You lead by example. And that's why, first and foremost, as a leader, you need to learn to love yourself, to take care of yourself, to find your balance to be able to keep going. It's not just for the sake of balance, but to be able to keep going because there's a lot of work and it, it mm. demands you all day, every day, all the time. So mm. you must take first good care of yourself to be able to take care of the others because you cannot give what you do not have. It's as simple as that. And then then uh, there's, a, there's a form it's like a pie. It's it's round and it's pie. And it's even the letters are P, you plan, I, you implement, and three, E, you evaluate. Continue. Plan. You plan. Yeah. Plan, then you implement. 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 And, then, and then you continue. Evaluate. Evaluate. Evaluate, okay. Yes. And that's that's sort of pie. what you, yeah. You call pie. that's that's a pie, and that that's a pie. It, it's a pie. You can you can draw a round pie, and you it's easy to remember. 
you plan okay. you plan well so uh, remember your why why are you doing this then that's that's the foundation why you're doing this and yeah. then you it, it's easier to uh, discover what you do and thirdly how you do it don't start how do i do it? how do i do this you discover your why you the are what and, and how. what and then how yeah wow and i use a lot of as an early childhood educator use a lot of play different kind of play and observe the children hear them make effort to hear them and uh, find their interest and uh, build their um, good self-esteem positive self image wow wow amazing as a final question this is amazing um i want us to just to uh, appreciate uh, sana you know uh my wife said thank you so much this is insightful um you know a friend of mine also good friend said his name is uh Paula Bakker. he said she's a leader with a clear vision and great attitude you know thank um, you or then who is also on the john maxwell team said kids have to trust you to allow you into their lives exactly you know, um, yes we, you know uh yeah kemi also from uh that's what she said uh the, the lady from america she said you know uh all i you know kemi from also from atlanta georgia says caring connecting and communication yes someone said great great job ma'am you know oh, <laughs> kemi from you so much. America, you know? so yes cool. in closing who are your mentors sana your mentors I'd say first of all, he is Jeru Tiga. He is Jeru okay. Tiga. He's a John Maxwell team member, and he comes from Kenya, and uh, he is currently based in New York. And I have taken, I have, I have uh, been Mr. Jeru Tiga's online courses, and I have actually met him in Orlando that year 2016 yeah, and, uh, yeah so he has a very big impact on me and uh i follow him closely and he he is very supportive uh i'd also like to take a moment to say that i so much learn from john maxwell and the team as such I admire Miles Monroe's teaching. Miles Monroe is the uh, past gone uh, pastor from the Bahamas, and uh, I have had great managers, and I've learned more from my colleagues and the students. And uh, I've I I need to say that uh, I have had many mentors in different areas to help me to become who I am now. The teachers from early years, Elizabeth Osipov, discovering my voice, because I used to speak like a small girl. I had Ritva Erola and Mati Bella. And that's true. I spoke like a little girl, even though I was already adult. I dare to lead. Uh, this course was from by Maria, Mrs. Maria Lena Jokainen as author the course, Pekka Mattila, as a dancer, ballroom dancing, Mrs. Katri Wiegmann, my current manager. Oh, so you're, you're yeah. a ballroom dancer? Yes. Wow. Yes. wow. I did it seven, I was competing seven years and it, I loved it. Wow. Yeah, all the wow. 10 dances, wow. Latin and standard. Then my parents wow. and, and, and my children. But this is like the African proverb. You want to go fast, go along. You want to go far, go together. Go wow. Yeah. Wow. And wow. So, wow. so, and and thank you, you brother from another mother. I could say that. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? You're my brother. I from heard that. Brother from another thank mother. You. This 
I mean, there's there's like no years, no time, nothing in between us. It's it's this is a huge honor. I'm so honored. You called me up, you challenged me to to show up and uh this is this is big. This is big. So thank you so much. I appreciate appreciate you highly. I respect you. Wonderful. It's been a wonderful time. Thank God. Wow, thank God. Sana. You know, I mean, you, you are out of, this is the 18th session, you know, on leadership talk with Goki. I mean, this is uh, one of my top sessions, you know. I mean, you're so authentic. Uh, you're so relatable. You're warm. Uh, you've invested so much in early childhood education over 36 years and you're still looking wonderful. I mean, my <laughs> wife and yourself, you spoke, uh, just um, a few weeks ago and, you know, you kept on speaking and I was wondering, even after an hour, you were still talking and talking, you know. I know. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. We had such a good time. We had such a good time because yeah. uh, we were like sisters. We, we share the same work situation and early childhood i know exactly what she was talking about i was there was yeah 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 it was so great to meet her wow. on the phone. wow wow wow, wow. so yes. i mean I, we, we've come to a, a close but not um uh i wouldn't say it's the end you know because there will still be many sessions that we'll have together on behalf of myself and my team and uh, the entire uh you know people that have been watching us from all over the world we want to say thank you for showing up thank you and uh my best thank wishes you. to your your family you know and we thank trust you. that uh, you continue to grow and your career will continue to blossom so um once again thank you everyone for staying this far and this long i i hope you, you've enjoyed the session and for those that are going to be watching the replay uh please uh you know feel free to share your comments and follow uh, Sana on all our social media platforms. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much.